What's up, everybody? I hope you're doing well. Before we dive into the fabulous interview I had the chance to do with John Clark of Private Practice Workshop, I wanted to let you know something because you'll notice when you watch the video that we did this interview face to face in person. We filmed this video in early March, a couple of weeks before the shelter in place mandate went into effect in my area. So I wanted to give you that heads up to remind you to stay safe, keep social distancing. It's helping to flatten the curve, at least here in California. But it's also nice to watch this sort of throwback video now from when we could still meet face to face. All right, enjoy the video. It's a lot of fun. Oh, you're so tall. Okay. <laughs> it's That's all right. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay. What's up, everybody? So we have a special video today because as you can see already, we have a special guest. This is the John Clark of Private Practice Workshop, and he is private practice owner turned private practice consultant entrepreneur. He's a licensed therapist. And fun fact, he lives in Paris full time. He just happened to be in town. He emailed me asking to get coffee because we've connected in the past. I said, do you want to film a video? And now we're doing it. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. So in this video, I'm going to pick John's brain. He's going to share all the juicy details that you're going to want to hear about how to get started in private practice all the things you don't want to do wrong. He's also going to interview me in a second video, which is gonna show up on his channel. So I've linked to that below and you can check that out after watching this one, of course. Okay. Oh, you already answered your question. Kind of, more of a planner than I admit. You know? yeah. <laughs> so let's dive into the questions. Let's do it. If you weren't a therapist and if money were no object, what would you do for a living? Uh, it would be a musician. Hmm. Uh, I've played music my whole life. Before I had a drum set, instead of banging on pots and pans, I banged on pillows, okay. which was a good Same alternative thing. if you're a parent of a young child yeah. who's like wants to aggressively hit something and call it music. And so I remember playing on pillows and I would arrange them on the couch kind of like this and I would sit over here and play them and in my mind, you know, I was hearing the cymbal and the drum and this and that. Right before I was starting graduate school, I was playing music, playing drums for a girl who's like a singer songwriter. And she basically said, you know, I want to pursue music full time and I want you to come with me move to Nashville, Tennessee, and go for it. Wow. And either do that or go to graduate school and become a therapist. But I became a therapist, so here I am. Is there any looking back on that decision? I'd be lying if I said no. In other words, yes. <laughs> <laughs> In present day, I still play as much music as I can. And maybe there will still be time to pursue that, I that hope dream. So. Hopefully I'll be famous someday. Yeah, and you are. And I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> You're famous in a different way. Yeah. All right, next question. What's something that people would be really surprised to learn about you? I, w I would like to put you on the spot and make you guess, because that would be even more of a fun game. Oh. Well, there's certain things I've heard you say before, uh, so I, that I already I know. Because I was going to say maybe that you enjoy cats. Yeah, that could uh, be it. Do uh, I not seem like a cat person? It's hard to tell. Yeah. I, yeah, it's hard to tell. Well, being a cat person has a negative connotation, and actually that's a platform I'd like to run on. Yeah. If I ever run for mayor of uh. anything, because I think being a cat person gets a bad rap, you know? And I'd like to really reverse that. Shame busting. Yes. The yeah. therapist in you is still standing on that platform. Yes. Fighting for justice, breaking down the stigma of being a cat person. <laughs> crazy cat lady. I don't know why it always has to be a lady. Why can't it be a crazy old cat man? Yes. Which is what I'm aiming for. Yeah. If I don't become a musician. Yeah. Literally sitting in the drying rack of our kitchen in the office is my crazy cat lady mug. I don't know where you were going with that for a second. <laughs> I was like... Uh, so you still haven't answered the question. Um, it would be that, uh, number one, I have a black belt in karate. Oh. And number two, that I, I still practice martial arts. I practice Muay Thai kickboxing. Wow. I'm um, quite an enthusiast. And the reason why I think people are surprised to learn that is, number one, they I get pinned for being like calm, soothing therapist. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also not jacked by any means. I'm just like tall and normal-ish. Um, so people are like, dude, there's no way that you could beat me up. And I'm like... I could, and if you keep talking this way, I will. <laughs> it's almost like the antithesis of being a therapist, which mm -hmm. is being calm and reassuring and mild-mannered, and then kicking someone in the face, Yeah. hopefully. I would not have guessed that, yeah. yeah. That's great, I like this question. All right. We stole a couple questions from Tim Ferriss, yeah. so thanks Tim Ferriss. Yeah, big fan, I'm sure he's watching. Hey Tim Ferriss. <laughs> <laughs> so how has failure set you up for success? I've had a lot of failures along the way, and I think one of the biggest things that sets therapists back is their really their fear of failure. A lot of people don't know, but I had a virtual assistant company for a while based in the Philippines. Um, 
And that company was a, a real failure, meaning it really didn't work. No. It didn't get off the ground. Um, we had some, some clients or some customers who were quite unhappy. Mm -hmm. um, the systems of the business weren't ready to scale. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a mess. And I, and I had a couple of messes like that going on at the time. The, I was also working more than any other time in my life, probably working those 12 hour days, mm -hmm. um, probably working six days a week, not taking care of myself um, to the point where I ended up in the ER for uh, like stress related wow. symptoms. Um, and that was kind of the rock bottom of sorts. I almost thought it was cool to be doing mm. more, right? Or to do 10 times as much as other people or to have four businesses at once. Um, and it was chaos. Mm -hmm. And it was a process of literally years of undoing some of that, of getting out of those businesses, of transitioning them, of selling one, um, and then really carving out now a business that I love and is very manageable. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up because I think that that's what I hear from so many therapists and I can be prone to thinking like, oh, I gotta, I gotta do more do and like things. this person's doing all that and so I'm supposed to do it too. And if you spread yourself too thin, it's just, yeah, it's gonna take a toll. I know we both like this question. Yeah. So what are some bad recommendations you hear from others in our profession? Yeah, I'm gonna try to not go into an absolute rage. But if you do, it's okay, it's a safe space. Things yeah. or your coffee table. Use your black belt. Yeah, yeah. I think the biggest qualm I have with, um, with therapists giving advice to other therapists is a lot of times it's very much centered around what's worked for them and their unique situation, mm -hmm. practice, goals, income, market whatever. It's a little bit like just dishing out advice as a therapist, right? Which is like you have a client who's dealing with depression and you immediately jump into these are the six things you need to do. You need to take this supplement because this worked for me or you need to join CrossFit because that's what worked for me. Like what does this therapist really want mm -hmm. out of their business or their life or how many clients do they really want to see or what does their financial situation look like um, within their family or do they have a lot of debt oh yeah the actual recommendations the first one would be uh, and this is a kind of a classic is you know if I build it they will come when I was building my first practice here well here in San Francisco very close to where we are um, I realized that that was going to the hardest that was going to be the hardest thing about growing my practice was actually getting clients mm. what I find is that usually if a therapist really has the ability to get new clients quick quickly consistently and effectively and the right kind of clients it unlocks a business um, almost instantly. What breaks my heart is a therapist that has the beautiful office and everything set up and ready to go and their EHR and no clients. Um, and not only are they not making money, they're uh, a lot of times losing money and losing hope. You're preaching to the choir. Yeah. <laughs> Any other bad recommendations you want to highlight? Two more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't charge too much. I think therapists need to uh, feed themselves first. And if they don't, um, they're going to be in a lot more trouble and stress and overwhelm and their practice might shut down entirely. So um, I think therapists need to charge more than they think they need to charge. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's a lot of shaming in our industry around like charging more. Wow, can you believe that mm -hmm. he's charging, you know, 250 or whatever. what gives him the right? It goes both ways. Like when yeah. you charge enough that you're making the appropriate living, you're also finding that the clients coming in appreciate the work so much more and I know it's for me as a therapist I'm just like a nicer therapist <laughs> yeah. it's awkward and it's uncomfortable to charge more or raise your fees if you have like a good kind of full fee program and you're taking care of your bottom line of your business with the clients who can pay the full fee then you can create a program within your business where you're seeing people for free or that sliding scale or whatever but that sliding scale has to be based on something and it has mm -hmm. to be actually based on real numbers a real income goal and ultimately no one's going to give me permission to charge more yeah. and did you say there was one more bad recommendation i, don't know. I think so <laughs> uh, i made a video about this actually on my youtube channel um, that's about um, why therapists fail um, mm. and basically calling therapists out for being too sensitive and you can imagine the response that I got for making mm. that video. Yes, we can't do our jobs without being sensitive and attuned right. people, right? However, when it comes to switching gears and being that business owner who is more rational, um, taking, right, taking risks, looking at things analytically, um, measuring things, um, etc., that our feelings really get in the way. You know, I might walk out the door, I'm, I might be... Um, 
you know, getting ready to make a decision in the business, and I feel nervous about it. Mm -hmm. If I listened to my nervousness every time I thought about doing something new in my business or something risky, I would, I would never accomplish anything. Absolutely. Right? That would be true for me. Yeah. I would not be in private practice. Yeah. I wouldn't do private practice skills. We wouldn't be filming this video. Last question. I feel like this is a good note to end on. Uh, what's one piece of advice you would give every therapist just starting out their private practice? Yeah, this is going to go a little bit off of um, the whole don't listen to your feelings too much part. Um, treat everything as an experiment and approach everything with a um, with persistence and curiosity. Mm -hmm. For instance, if I am that therapist who's worried about spending, you know, uh, a bunch of money on my ads this month and it doesn't go well, oh, I will be devastated, I'll go broke, it'll mean I'm a failure, whatever it is. Or it's an experiment mm -hmm. and even failure is just information. Man, these are all good answers. I, yeah. I was supposed to answer the same questions later, yeah. but I don't know you if can I can just top them. <laughs> I do feel the theme of kind of leaning into things that are hard or, or at least not skipping something just because it's hard yeah. uh, and, and also seeing things that maybe sound or look like failure as opportunities to learn uh, and kind of almost an expected part of the process yeah. and just sort of reframing it like it's an experiment or it's a learning opportunity and, and carrying forward even when the way we feel might not align with yeah. the reality. Well, thank you so much, John. This was such a, a, a helpful interview on so many levels. And I feel like it also kind of goes behind the scenes in some ways. I got to hear some parts of your story that I didn't know before. As I mentioned, there are two videos. So in the second video, John asks me the exact same questions and you can find that posted to his YouTube channel. So I've linked to that below. Go ahead and check that out because I had a lot of fun doing that as well. So thanks again, John. It's been so, so nice having thanks you here. Um, maybe you can let people know where they can find you if they're curious. Yep. Easiest place is privatepracticeworkshop.com to check out all the free resources and trainings we have there. We've got a podcast called Private Practice Workshop. You can uh, subscribe to that anywhere you listen to podcasts um, and get in touch. I'd love to hear from you. Well, thanks again, John. That concludes this video. Don't forget to check out the other video on his channel. And until next time, from two therapists to another, we wish you well. <laughs> love it. <laughs> Today's video is brought to you by TherapyNotes.com. Therapy Notes helps with scheduling, notes, and billing so that you can spend more time with your clients and less time on back office paperwork. Click the link in the description of this video to get two months to try it for free with no commitment. Hopefully, it worked. <laughs> in the other video, John interviews me this... As I mentioned... <laughs>